this talk will be a kind of uh, continuation of the talk on Tuesday, because during the talk on Tuesday, we had some combinatorial multivector field. And also, we say that if we can design some combinatorial version of a dynamical system using combinatorial multivector field, we can extract some properties in the of the dynamical system from the result we get on um, our combinatorial multivector field. So here today I'm going to show how to build that uh, a kind of algorithm that builds some combinatorial multivector field from uh, flow or from vector field and also from sample data. So I'll start with So uh, my outline will be some quick definition that we need before knowing what is a combinatorial multivector field. Uh, the algorithm to construct combinatorial multivector field from some autonomous dynamical system and the one for constructing them from sample data that are also from dynamical system. So we start with some quick definitions and notation. And combinatorial multivector field. So we just did not the idea. I think I, I don't need to define what's the idea here by in a and the closure, and the map is defined as the closure of a subset, the topological space minus uh, that sub subset. And we will define a notion that we're going to use a lot. What is locally closed? Uh, so a subset A of a topological space X is locally closed if its map is closed. It's a kind of equivalent definition to what we had uh, last time. And now I will just, this is just the theorem of uh, topology on finite space. So just recalling what is the, uh, uh, what kind of topology we can use on finite space that are, I would say nice because we know that uh, the Hausdorff topology will not be very good on finite spaces. So this theorem of uh, Alexander gave us a nice T0 topology using some uh, process for process. So we had this definition uh, last time, but using, instead of using the upper set, the down sets, but I prefer the upper sets. So yeah. Now we define the structure that we use. Uh, when the, the structure that we use define uh, the combinatorial multivector field on the left shell complex. So it's just a generalization of central complex that we talked about, but the result also works on left shell complex. And it's just the set with a gradation and a map, which is uh, the incidence coefficient defined from the product to the, the ring where it's defined. And we have one which is the property for the feature of this map. So I would say that this complex is regular if it's uh, either invertible or zero in the ring. And uh, now we can define the topology on this, on this space. And this topology is just defined by first defining a, an order, a partial order on the left set complex. And after defining this partial order using the incidence coefficient, you can define the left shell topology. The partial order is just uh, the phase relation. So it's defined, it's derived from the phase relation. And we can define the left shell topology. And since we have a topology on this space, we can now introduce uh, the concept of the multivector, which is just a locally close or uh, convex. But the convex here is in the sense of process. I read precise convex because I'm going to use this convex. It's easier to see next. I'm going to use it next uh, on my construction. So it's just a, a locally closed subset of, I would say, a lesser complex. And the combinatorial vector field would just be a partition of the space into 
multivectors. So, so far it looks very, uh, it's not a formula. It's, we don't really see the relation between this and the dynamical system or how we can study it. So now maybe I hope we'll be able to understand a little bit uh, how it works. So before introducing the construction of a combinatorial multivector field from a dynamical system, I will try to explain a little bit what, where we are going. So we start with a vector field and that we don't want, that we want to know the behavior, but maybe you are like me, uh, lazy to integrate, to see if there is a periodic orbit or other behavior, or you don't even know how to use integration. So we just think, okay, maybe there is a way to study it using some combinatorial means instead of having this uh, long uh, integration that I don't know how to do. So we, we have a theorem that appeared in the, just this year that shows that we can really extract just from that combinatorial version that I'm going to construct the behavior of a dynamical system. So um, I think one of the author of the theorem is just uh, there. Yeah, the most common. So now the method we use um, is transversality. So I will first define what is a transversal simplex because we are going to deal with simplex. So, uh, I want also to remind that I'm defining on higher dimensions, so just in our RD, but I will be showing examples and work on R2 because uh, on R3 and higher dimension is very, computationally it's very difficult to get some results so far. So just have something on R2. So uh, D minus one simplex in RD will be transversal. So the flow, the flow will be uh, transversal to D at minus one simplex in RD if we have this uh, scalar product, which is different from zero. It just means that the vector field cross the, the uh, dimensional simplex, the D minus one dimensional simplex just in one direction. It's very, very, the definition can be a little bit strange, but very easy to see. So I have some example. Here we have a transversal uh, edge, and here we have a non transversal edge. So you can see that here we just have the vector field crossing in one direction, but here the vector field is crossing in two different directions. You have here one here and, and like this. And we are sure that here we have a place where, where this uh, scalar product is zero because this vector field is continuous. So using, so we now go to the algorithm to construct those uh, combinatorial multivector fields. So what we need to construct that is just a C2 vector field. So the C2 is, uh, it's useful, not in this construction, but because we are using some other technique at the end. So maybe when I will go to that place, I will explain why I, why I need a C2 vector field. A random selection of point on a compact, compact set in RD. So this compact should be chosen so that you can have something, uh, some behaviors inside. Otherwise, if you just take a compact where the flow maybe it's just gradient like it's just I I think I think wasting time. And we make a triangulation of our compact set. So our triangulation here represents our spatial complex, and we use uh, the transversality relation. So the transversality relation is that when I have two uh, two d two d minus one simplex, and I check the transversality on d minus to simplex. Okay, let me try to explain with uh, uh, R2 because it's easier to, to see. So if I have maybe uh, two, two syntaxes that are triangles and I have, they have one common edge, one common non-transversal edge, then I merge them, they become one. So we define then a relation on the triangles. 
uh, triangles of uh, a simplicial complex. And we extend this relation to an equivalence relation on the set of triangles just by taking the transitive closure of that relation. So this is uh, what we call the transversality relation, just the equivalence relation, which is defined using the transversality, uh, the transversality relation. Yeah. So uh, here I have one example of a multivector that we construct. Here the flow is supposed to go from right to left, so it's going like this. And we have two transversal, two non-transversal edge, this and this. So the difficult to see the color there. So we match this triangle because they have transversal edge in uh, non-transversal edge in common. And here we have what we call the mouth, which is represented by the circle and the, and the dotted, dotted point, dotted lines. And here we have an entrance where the vector, where the vector of media enter, it enters here and get and go out here. So this is one example of multivector. And this is a nice multivector directly computed using transversal relation, but there's a problem. With only a transversal side relation, we cannot uh, ensure that our multivector is convex. So we have, for example, this case where you have a not convex multivector. We still have flow, but the flow is going like this instead of going just straight. And we have this point, which is out, this edge is out, and this point is going in, it's still inside. So this is the mouth, and this, this is the mouth. And this multivector is not, uh, this, I would say this figure, because it's not a multivector, it's not convex, because this point belongs to the multivector, and this edge doesn't belong. So I have this uh, multivector that belong to itself, this point that belong to itself, and this is, I would say, in the middle. So it's a non-convex thing that I have here. So this is not the multivector. So we have to fix this problem. And uh, what we do is that we use something that we call the propagation method. So when we arrive at this state, when you have such edge that is uh, that cause non-convexity, we match this multivector with the multivector containing the edge. And we don't have one multivector that may be convex or not. If it's not convex, we merge again. So at least if we, since we know that the whole space is uh, locally closed, we are sure that at the end we have uh, our multivector here. But there is also a problem coming from this, is that, uh, okay, just by merging, we may have just a multivector consisting of only one edge, one uh, multivector field consisting of one multivector, and then it's really, it's useless to, to use that. So uh, we will show a solution uh, of that. It's just a sort of solution for some cases, not the general case. And I will just first uh, give the algorithm again that we use for a mind diagram. It's just, we take a compact set in R2, we construct the tri triangulation. On triangulation, we use the transversal, um, transversal triangulation to compute non-transversality and to create uh, some candidates for multivector. And after we use propagation method to ensure the complexity of our multivectors. So something we found to fix this problem because the most problematic part in our computation were around the fixed point. We had some expansion of the fixed, of the multivector around the fixed point to the boundary or to the other uh, general concept like the of it. So we thought about creating what we call a transversal polygon. So transversal means that we ensure that what we create around the fixed point is a multivector when you compute it. The memory computer, the memory, uh, how our multivector is directly a multivector. So, uh, 
vector field will be transverse to a polytope. And here we talk about convex polytope. It's not the general case. If each of its face is, uh, if uh, the vector field is transverse as each of its face. We have one example here. We have this, and we can see that the vector field is just crossing in one direction. Here we have uh, for uh, some vector field, and the other one is for the Vanderpool. So there's also some properties of this, because as you can see, there's maybe uh, there's some faces that we have. We can compute also using this method the minimal number of faces because since we are doing computation, we don't want to have just uh, something very big. We want to minimize uh, to minimize the quantity of data that we use of or point that we use. So we compute also the minimal number of points we use. We need to consider that polytop so that we can reduce the number of points in our for to create our multivector field. So there are some properties for this uh, multivector, some lemma. First, uh, we consider a linear vector field and its associated uh, differential equation. And we know that if we if you have uh, if the representation the, the matrix representation of our vector field has two complex eigenvalue that has non-zero real and, and imaginary part, then we know that we can construct this polytope. It's it's possible to construct with more, with maybe uh, less uh, hypothesis, but uh, so far for us, we just use this and we can construct it. So we can construct as we did, and we can also compute the smaller number of uh, S that this point of need. Also have some properties such as uh, if I have uh, a vector field and the point uh, transfers are point up to a fixed point, then, and I use an invertible matrix, I apply it to the vector field. So the point of computed by applying this product, this, uh, this, this uh, matrix to the vector, to the point up is still a transversal point up to the new, the new vector field and the product of two transversal polytope is also a transversal polytope. Okay, so now we are going to uh, our last lemma. This is for the d dimensional case for any d with a vector equal to one. So if the matrix this is the matrix of uh, the vector field, if it has a complex second value. And all the eigenvalue have non-zero real part. So here we just say non-zero on the real part, no on the imaginary part. So we have also a transversal photo that we can, con we can construct. And we kind of use the, the previous lemma to, to make this one. I can now generalize to nonlinear vector field. So here is where you need uh, C to nonlinear vector field, but it's more in the proof that you see that the, the vector field should, should be C2. So I'm not sure the proof here. So if the Jacobian matrix, the inner case, diagonal is good. So if it has the same properties at the matrix A, then you have a transversal polytope. It's very easy to see that because you know that the behavior of the of uh, the, the vector field around this fixed point is the same as the behavior of the of the linear rise. And we, we can also find that neighborhood. So we don't only say that they exist a neighborhood. We also find the neighborhood, uh, a neighborhood where we can construct this point of and we ensure that the face is uh, transversal. We don't say that it's the best neighborhood or the worst, but it's just a neighborhood. So um, now I can go to one example of this. We start with the Van der Poel system. Uh, then this is its vector field. You can see that there is a, a periodic orbit here, and there's a fixed point. So uh, repelling periodic orbit, attracting fixed point. And we just make a triangulation. So uh, of a compact, this compact is very big. You cannot see it, but it's 
minus 1515 uh, square. But uh, this is just because we don't want to make a very big computation for this. And when you are very far from the from this frequent behavior, frequent behavior you have easily transversality. So we took a very big compact. Here we compute the vector the vector field the, from the term vector field using transversality relation. We have uh, some multivectors. You have some big multivectors, and if you, if it was possible, you will see that they are some. This multivector, for example, has some, not some transversal edges inside, but these are due to uh, our method, propagation method, and we have so also some very big multivectors that are not good. But since we are using really big, a big uh, compact. It's normal that things like that happen. And here, when we compute the mass decomposition, we have two mass sets. So this, normally we have a mass set here, but it's blue and with the white inside is difficult to see. So we have this mass set, and we can prove that present the periodic orbits on the Randevoort uh, equation. We have this that represents the fixed point. So normally from the figure, you can know, you can see if it's attracting or repelling uh, periodic orbits, but um, this figure has, has, has been a little bit arranged so that we can see the multivector created from propagation method. It's this one, uh, this one. So with, with this and the theorem, that appeared some some months ago. We can prove that this there is a periodic orbit in the Van der Poel equation. Okay, so now we switch to the construct construction from sample data. Okay, so here the motivation is also that we have a cloud of vectors, and we want to study this kind of a vector that are from a dynamical system. But just fitting some polynomials, uh, fitting it in some polynomials will make some errors. And after the study, we'll make error again. So we are thinking about a way to study it just using the data. We can have some good, some nice, we can have some nice result with that, or we can have nothing but we just try to extract something here. Yeah. And here we, we will use, because we don't have like continuous data, we just have like data and they're just going. We use uh, another definition, which is uh, weak transversal. So this is a bit long definition, but just the image, this image can explain easily. So if you have, for example, uh, this triangulation of the space again, but we make the triangulation instead on the point where we have the data. So we don't triangulate the space randomly. We have some data, we triangulate the space at the point where we have the data, and we define what is the weak transversality, which is just that if the, the data point in the same hyperplane, then we have Transversality. If not, you have non transversality. And you can see that this is also, this weak transversality is a little bit more general than the uh, transversal. Because if it's some, something is transversal, then it's weak transversal. And uh, we add something to this, to this uh, creation, because we use the same method. After building our triangulation, we use the same method, we take the, we construct with this weak transversality relation that are, as is really the same as the transversality relation, but just with the difference that we just look at the, at the vertices. And uh, we construct the same multivector that we will construct if you had transversality, transversality relation. But the difference is that we allow also 
this kind of multivector that just contain uh, edges and vertices. So here, for example, if you have the, this, this should be a non not with transversal edge because we have this vector in this upper plane and this one in the other. But since it's very close to the vector, we decide to just construct a vector consisting of this vertex and this, this edge, and the same for the other to the base. So we use the same, we add this, and we do it because we want to really have something that is not far from the behavior of the uh, of, of, of our class of vectors. So now we can go to an example because as I said, it's the same method that we use to construct. We have this cloud of vectors and they're derived from this equation. I think we saw something similar this morning to have two periodic orbits, uh, one at uh, one, another one at two. So we are, we try to study using the transversality relation and to see if we can get some behavior from this study. We uh, take this triangulation, it's really from this, this triangulation is derived from these vectors at each point of the, of the curve of the vector. And we, we build our combinatorial multivector field from this, uh, we use, and here we can see that we have also some, some dots in red with lines. So these dots and lines represent multivectors that are built from vertices and edges. And we try again with the more decomposition to see if we can perhaps can extract something. And we get this. So here we have two more sets. This is uh, one repelling periodic orbit, one attracting periodic orbit, and this is the fixed point. This is the fixed point. This is uh, attracting fixed point. Yeah. So you can see that these small multivectors help a little bit to just enclose. So how to have something which is not really going too, too far and merging maybe these two more sets. So we really can get something which is similar to the behavior of, of the flow of the flow of the vectors, I mean the curve of the vectors, just with this, without having to go to the process of constructing a dynamical system from the data. So we make a direct study. Um, there are just some comments. I want to add before ending is that for the construction of this momentum vector field in the case of dynamical systems of just the data, uh, it's very difficult to extract the MOS set and to have nice, nice MOS set. Because sometimes we had uh, some non, I would say non-usable MOS set because you had some expansion to the boundaries and we had more say that were merging with the boundaries. And then we cannot say anything because it's not, it's not something that is good. So maybe that's just my thinking, maybe with a more point, you have a better result, but the algorithm is too big. It's, it's, it's the complexity, it's too big to have so many points I mean, mine, maybe someone has done something that is better, but my opponent is very bad for constructing this with more than 800,000 points. So we are looking for some other method, maybe to have some good uh, behavior with the most set. And I think uh, the talk of uh, Peter in the morning was a nice thing to think about in that sense. So, thank you. Thank you. Question? So, the, the last one where you have the data, did you take all the data points that you had for your uh, implantation? Yes. 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 What? 
if you took only fewer, it's with it's still I think it's still possible. It's it may be possible or not, but it depends because if you take fewer and you have different behavior, then you will have something different. Mm -hmm. But if you take the data that in fact the data should give the behavior of of the system. So if you take fewer and just fewer randomly, it's very likely that you don't get something to scoot. And, and this data would it have numerically sort of bits of the system or how did you get the, the data? So this data is obtained from this. I just choose randomly some point where I would just have this data computed directly from this system. And do you think this would also work if you had noisy data where, where kind of you have kind of contradicting information even at nearby points or would um, even out, do you think? Or? So it depends how noisy the data is. I think if it's not very noisy, it's yeah. fine. Because I think some people just work on this uh, persistence of mostly composition and it should work for just very, if, if you have small noises, but not too big. And just following that, would that depend on what your tolerance is for allowing the ones that sort of are not quite weakly transversal, but almost. Uh, that seems like a way of sort of distinguishing between close, noisy stuff. Do you see what I mean? Uh, like yeah, you, uh, yeah. I think maybe. Uh, I'm, I'm not very clear about that, but it's, mm -hmm. it's possible. It's very possible. Very possible. So we also, because here we have just the, the lone triangulation, but we can also choose another triangulation also. That depends on the data, and that's what we need the data. But uh, maybe in that case, we will have. That will depend if we use a triangulation that's really for, for the data. But maybe we arrange for data. But it's just a random triangulation, not random. The only triangulation that we use here, and we're thinking about changing. It. I also want to. Okay, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> um, uh, because it seems like uh, you know, I mean, you are making some choice, some choices in your process, right? You are choosing randomly the points to evaluate if it evaluates two or more of them. Uh, you are making choices in, in how to do your triangulation. Would would it be possible to use some kind of iterated refinement or something where you I don't know you you uh, you run your process, you see your Morse decomposition, uh, you see it's not nice, it doesn't look like what I want, then you can go back and then, uh, you know, run some more samples and uh, do a new triangle, some, some, some counter example guided abstraction refinement. So we, we, we do actually that, actually, most of the time, we do that yeah. because we don't, um, this, this the decomposition doesn't guarantee that you get something nice at the end, it's mm -hmm. just, that is their way to formalize this process. So we are trying to do that now. Okay, okay. Thank you. So you said that the uh, complexity limits how many points you can do. So where's the bottleneck? Is that the computation algorithm? What is that? Yeah, the, yeah, yeah. That's, that's the bottleneck of the computation. Yes. Okay. It's still easy in two dimensions, but in higher dimensions, it's Have you tried experiments in 3D? I started, but not to the point. Okay. More questions? In that case, we won't bother for uh, Did you manage to, because the, the result that you show, uh, the, 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 yeah, this big red more said it's almost touching the stationary point, right? Yes, yes. Uh, so we have two very close multi vectors. Did you manage to separate them with more points? I mean, if you, if you take more points, can you approximate the, the orbit better? Did you manage that? So the problem is that we had this problem of separation exactly with the wonderful, and uh, it's, you just have this multivector that separate the fixed point from, from other, other things. And, we, there is nothing else, no, no, no other artifact that we use here, just the transversal polytop. But I think we can use uh, um, this uh, Lapunov function on the periodic orbit 
to have a better separation of the. Uh, I mean, the question was if, if you if you talk, take more points in this in one the point. Yeah. Uh, if it's possible to have some. Is it possible to see the orb better? Yes. 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 Okay. I tried to so you more. managed to get uh, smaller or thinner more set. Yeah, yes. I think what you, what is happening when there's more points is that you just you just have it's just easier to get transversality, so you just have more separation. Mm -hmm. So we have, I tried with more points and yeah, I got better message for the building public. Just one more question. How do you check the transversality because it's it's I understand in principle it's a line and you need to see whether it goes through. But do you, how do you compute it really? Because so, you can't compute all points on the line. No, no, no. We use it for our classic ah. computation. Okay. If there are no questions, then I have a comment. This is art. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> it looks like Kandinsky. Uh, I, have, <laughs> I have some some T-shirts from uh, from the book of Tarkov uh, where they are showing some some, um, some attractors. Uh, mm -hmm. This kind of stuff you should print it on T-shirt. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the second one was even better. The one at uh, yeah, the yeah, I, I, uh, yeah, yeah. I have that every day. The comment I I hear almost all the time. Yeah, it's really nice. Also with the, the, the small the small vectors which are going to be in there. How how do you decide the color of the? It's yeah. random. It's random. Yeah. Okay. So it's also computer. I mean, it's computer. Yes. Yeah. yeah okay. That's it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Now I think we we just stop the. So if um